Welcome to the fourth video in my series on Introduction to Unity. Last video we talked about materials. We made this little box here and we added a skybox material to our world. And uh, we added the, the ground. In this video we're going to be talking about prefabs. So a prefab is a game object that is stored in your project folder that can be instantiated in your world. And I think the best way to do this is just show you. So I'll come over here and I'll create a prefab folder. It's good to keep everything organized. And the way you create a prefab is once you have a game object in your scene view, in your hierarchy here, you can simply drag it over into your project folder and you could do you could have dragged it over anywhere. I made that prefab folder to drag it into, but I could have just easily just dragged it into the root of the project folder. And now that I've done that, I now have a cube prefab. And what does that mean? Well that means that the text on this thing turned blue. And that's just to tell me that that's an instantiation. Well what's it mean to be an instantiation? Very simple. If I drag multiple of these prefabs out here, three seems to be a good number, and then I were to say change the scale of the prefab, you'll notice that all of my cubes change scale. So prefab allows you to have a single manageable object over here that you can put multiple instances of it in your world and then you can still manage its settings from the single prefab and it will propagate to all of the instances. And over here when I mention the term blue that's just to let you know that that is in fact an instantiation of a prefab and not simply a single object in your scene view. So the plane over here, it's in black, that's just a single object. It doesn't have any prefab associated with it. There's nothing in the project view over here that is connected to your plane. You'll notice that the first person controller we dropped in last video is a prefab, uh, which should be pretty obvious since it has it's linked to this guy over here. So if we were to change any of these settings over here, it would propagate out to this guy. So a couple things to know about prefabs. Rotation is not something that propagates out from the prefab. So if we were to set the rotation on all of these along their x to say 50 in the prefab, it doesn't actually change any of the already instantiated objects. Now if I made a new object, it will have that new rotation I just put on there, but doesn't propagate out. I'm not sure why that is, but it's a good thing to know. Uh, secondly, you may have noticed that some of the values in the inspectors of these objects over here, the instantiated cubes, have been become bold. And what that does is that represents a difference between the object and the prefab. So as we noted, you'll notice that none of the rotations have become bold, and that's because they're independent anyway, so they're not actually linked back to the prefab. But if I were to change the scale of this guy to two along the y-axis, you'll notice that it becomes black. And what that means is that if I were to now come back here and I wanted to scale all of them up to say three, this one over here stays at two because it's, it's overriding that with its own value now. Now, if I were to set these all back to one and then come back to this guy and set him back to one, You'll notice that it's still in bold. So it still considers this to be its own value, not the prefab value, even though they're identical. So if I were to come back here and try and set everything to 2, this guy stays at 1. And what you can do about that is you come over here to this guy's inspector, and you right-click that value, and we'll say revert value to prefab. The bold will go away. And now, if we come back and make that change, it will affect all four of our cubes.
So anything you do to any particular one of these, like for instance, what if I wanted to replace this guy's box collider with a sphere collider? You'll notice that this entire sphere collider is in bold, which means that it is overriding the setting of the cube. So if I come in here and hit play, this box is going to probably act very strangely. Yes, it is, because it's no longer got the, the bounding box that a cube would have. So it's actually got an invisible sphere centered in the middle there, and it's resting on it. Well, what if I wanted all of the boxes to behave that way? Well, you can come over here, and there's an Apply button. And what this will do is it'll take any of the changes in bold from this instance of the prefab and apply it back onto the prefab. So I'm going to hit Apply here. And you'll see that the Sphere Collider is no longer in bold here. And now all of the other boxes also have Sphere Colliders. Because they got pushed to the here, which then pushed it back out to all the ones that weren't weren't overriding it with their own setting. So now if we hit play, we'll have four very strangely acting boxes. And you may decide, well, I don't really want that. We can fix it a couple ways. We could do what we did before. We could come over here and we could replace this one guy's sphere collider with a box collider and then apply it back to the prefab. Or we could simply come to the prefab and give it back a box collider and have that replace the sphere collider we had on there. And since none of these guys were overriding the collider, they all get that propagated back out to them. So now they will all act like boxes again. So prefab, very, very useful idea. Uh, especially if you, say, have enemies and you have you know, multiple instances of enemies in your game and you want to change one setting for all of them, you don't want to have to go through every single one and go down to your enemy AI script or whatever you want to change and change it for each and every single one. So try to use prefabs as much as possible. You really want nearly everything in, in your game world to be prefab. Another thing to mention is that you can instantiate prefabs in script. And I will be doing a scripting series separate from the introduction series a little bit later. But uh, it's good to know that I could write a script that could create any number of these cubes and I could position them all over the world. And that would be basically how you'd want to spawn enemies in the world, usually is through a script. So you'd want to have an enemy prefab and a script that, you know, instantiates that wherever needed and however many you need. So that's it about prefabs, and that is also about it all I have time for. The next video, we will be doing Terrain Engine.